However, because your eyes are so overwhelmed by the brightness, you can't see stars, you can barely see the moon. The moon has a different color in space um, from looking at it from Earth. It's kind of a much browner and got more golden color than it is when you look at it from, uh, from the Earth's surface. Then when you go around the back of the Earth, uh, away from the sun, and you're in the Earth's shadow, then, after your eyes have recovered from that incredibly <laughs> bright light, yeah. you start to see a myriad of stars far, far greater than you ever see on Earth again, even from the highest mountain or from a high jet aircraft. And the galaxy itself, this, the Milky Way galaxy, mm. is the place where the sun resides in, in the universe, is an extraordinary disk with a big bulge towards the center of the galaxy that is, is totally awe-inspiring. And the, the stars themselves have different colors. They are reds and greens and yellows. You can't see that from the Earth. They kind of twinkle when you look at it on a bright, mm. clear night, um, say, from England. But from space, they're steady, hard light their points and they are either bright green or violet or red it's really quite visible and you, that's the difference really that you see okay do i mean some of the early uh, space pioneers turned to god they had unusual sort of um happenings in their lives can you understand that has anything happened to you well i i think it's all to do with how much you understand or you think you know and uh Unfortunately, I have a certain intellectual arrogance which makes me think I understand a lot of what I'm seeing when I'm in space. And so I didn't get particularly moved by, um, by religious feelings. However, um, one thing I should point out is that after the collision and our communication was very, very limited with the Earth, and in particular my, my contacts with my family, Rhonda, got to be rather difficult. And I had to use radio amateurs most of the time to do it, radio, radio hands. Mm. At that point, you really do feel isolated. You know, if you have a medical problem, if you have any, any kind of just difficulty, there's no one there to help you. You really have to be self-sufficient. And, and you're such a remote outpost. It is like being stuck on the South Pole. Well, I mean, the South Pole is actually a great place at the moment. There's lots of ice cream there and everything yeah. else. But, but if you're totally isolated, you really have to solve this problem. And you're, the feeling of loneliness is really rather acute. And I would sometimes imagine myself especially on the dark side of the earth uh, with just the stars visible and the solar arrays of the station hanging up against the stars kind of motionless i think of myself as being on an interstellar voyage you know for many 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 years away from the solar system towards mm. the next star and looking out across the galaxy towards the dark dark black dust clouds that are towards the center of the galaxy you get the feeling that the universe is a very very vast place but not particularly caring at least from the point of view that you're in a, uh, a small small tin tin can and um, very insignificant compared to it do you think that we will reach out and explore these other worlds in in the future i i think so um i think the drive of, of human beings to explore is pretty evident from history um i think we've seen actually remarkable strides even in this century in terms of human history, you know, humans have been only around in, in recognizable hominid form for about two million years. In the last uh, a thousand years, really, we've developed industry. And in the last hundred years, we've developed um, any kind of technology or, or space flight. So in, in, those, in those terms, I think everything's accelerating. And, and we should certainly expect in the next uh, century um, most of the solar system to be uh, populated. Mm. I think industry developed in the asteroid belt 